we turn our Bibles to Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. For a part of us, Idavanamathiaim, Pandranamate Wakim, and honor, I'll read for you. Honor your father and mother so that you will live a long time in the land that God, your God, is giving you. Nadeyuma Yehova Nenekitharin Nadeshitta. Dirkai Sundaguan, Ninde Apaneim, Ameim, Bahumanika. Praise God. The title that I gave to my message this morning, I told you that this is focusing on the mothers. So the title is She Deserves It. That's the title. She Deserves It. A couple of weeks ago, I, in the evening time, I think it was, a, I don't know if it's Friday or a Saturday in meeting here, I have read a, a story, and probably many of you are not here, so I'm going to read it again for you. This is something happened to a, a missionary. I'll read it for you. In 1988, I his name is Randy, moved with my wife and two sons, ages two and eight weeks, from Texas to Sulawesi, an island north of Australia and south of Philippines. We served as missionaries to a cluster of islands in the eastern Indonesia until returning in 1996. While in Indonesia, I taught in a small indigenous Bible college and worked with churches scattered from Borneo to Papua, to Papua. One day I was sitting in a hut with a group of church elders from a remote island village off the coast of Borneo. They asked my opinion about a thorny church issue. A young couple had relocated to their village many years before they had uh, many years before because they had committed a grievous sin in their home village for as long as they had resided here they had lived exemplary lives of godliness and had attended church faithfully now a decade later they wanted to join the church should we let them sabara chodi yadana oru islandil ninna oru couple ivada njangale village il vanda amasikari avaru velli oru mahabhavan cheyidund avarku avada thamasikkan uttilla adondu avaru ivada vanda amasikya 10 varsha ivada thamasikkana avarku sabhayil membership venam appo അതിന് ഈ മെഷീനറിയുടെ അഡ്വൈസ് അവർ അന്വേഷിക്കുക സോ ദ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഇസ് ഷുഡ് ബി ലെറ്റ് ദം ആസ് ഒബിയസ്ലി ട്രബിൾഡ് എൽഡേഴ്സ് സോ ഭാരപ്പെടുന്ന ഈ എൽഡേഴ്സ് മൂപ്പന്മാർ ഇദ്ദേഹത്തോട് ചോദിച്ചു അറ്റംപ്റ്റിംഗ് ടു അവോയ്ഡ് Attempting to avoid the question, I replied, Well, what's the grievous sin did they commit? Avari jayda, yi pahingaravaya pabam, yandana mupamare. The elders were reluctant to air their village's dirty laundry before a guest. But finally one of them replied, They married on the run. In America, we call that eloping. That's it. I blurted out. What was the sin? Quite shocked. They stared at this young and foolish missionary and asked, Have you never read Paul? So they ask a question. Have you, have you never read Paul? 
I certainly thought I had. I, I, I certainly thought I had. I had my PhD was in Paul. They reminded me that Paul told believers to obey their parents, Ephesians 6 1. So they were willing to admit that everyone makes mistakes. We don't always obey. But surely one should obey in what is likely the most important decision of his or her life. Choosing a spouse, I suddenly found myself wondering if I had in fact ever really read Paul. My American Paul clearly did not expect this command to include adult children deciding whom to marry. Moreover, it was clear that my reading or misreading had implications for how I counsel church leaders committed to faithful and obedient discipleship. One missionary day, one prayasavana, one of the people in that village, they just, when Bible says, and Paul says in, in, in Ephesians 6 verse 1, children obey your parents. So with us, and he says, my American Paul. For them, their, American, their, their Paul, the, the, the preacher who, the, the writer, the God, the apostle told them, obey your parents till what day, what age? I asked this question to those who came on Saturday night or Friday, I don't remember. Maybe some of us think, oh, we get married and, and we don't need to obey our parents anymore. Till what age? Children, till what age you should obey your parents? Can I hear some answers? Yeah. Till do you die? Very good. He's young, so but he understands. <laughs> I should ask this to some uh, young ones here, young adults. Till what age should you obey your parents? So we are talking about honoring our parents, especially the today's focus is honoring mothers. So we live in a culture, we believe that once I reach a certain point, certain age, then certain maturity. I don't need them. I don't need their input into my life. So we sideline them. You could probably, you have better understanding, you have better education, but there's still a way in which you can still honor them. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, listen, mothers. It's an awesome job. It's a difficult job. It's a responsible job being a mother. Motherhood is it's a tough job. And your job is to bring up the children. Makle and Walarti Kundiriga. Okay? See, every time Bible speaks to the mothers, all right, Bible actually gives us a lot of examples of great mothers. As you go through, make a survey through the scriptures, you come across some great mothers. Great mothers. So we look at some of them today. A mother's primary responsibility is to raise the children. Now, we live in a different time. We live in a time where both will have to do two jobs to survive. So where does a mother get time to raise the child? Biblical pattern is father goes, bring the food, mother cooks, give it to the children. She raises the children. Now, we, you know, things have changed. The mortgage has gone up. Rent has gone up. Everything, insurance have gone up. Everything has really gone up. The two people will have to work. It's so difficult for one person to manage with one person's income these days. It's difficult. So it changed the dynamics of the family. So how much time a mother gets? But that was something that the 
Bible expects. No scripture is compelling any woman to go work. I said the word, I use the word compel. Bible, of course, you see places where women work and make an income and all those things you see in the book of Proverbs also. But she's not forced. Okay? We also need to understand you need a lot of grace. A lot of grace to raise children. Because the world has changed. So that's the reason. Not because you guys are bad. You guys are good. But you live in a tough world. We need a lot of grace. But they always needed grace. But we are, we are living in challenging times. So we're going to look at some of the, um, some of the mothers today. Just, you know, this is going to be a little longer sermon today. I'll finish if I can. Otherwise, stop. So the first thing you look at, the mothers deserve to be honored for their instruction and their influence. Children, listen, you're paying attention. All right. This is for us. We are talking about honoring our mothers. This is for the husbands and others. Say so they deserve to be honored for their instructions and their influence. I want to just, uh, there, I said there are so many examples in the scripture. One of the person we're going to look at is Eunice. This is Timothy's mother. All right. In the, in, in the book of Acts, you would come across that. Timothy had a very good mother by the name Eunice. And a grandmother called Lois. Or Lois. Their influence was so tremendous on the life of Timothy. All right. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, as you read, as it really speaks about. That precious memory triggers another. Your honest faith. And what a rich faith it is. Handed down from your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And now to you. That faith has really come down from grandmother to your mother and to you. And I see that faith in you. I see that faith in you. Just think about what Eunice has achieved. And you see Paul as he was traveling in his mission journey. And he comes across this young man. And he handpicked him to be his travel companion. Can you imagine Ningalda Magane, the greatest missionary lived on this earth? I'm talking about missionary. Lord Jesus, then you see one of his great friends, one of his apostles. He handpicked young Timothy because he was ready to go. It's because of the work that she has done, the instruction she has given. Hallelujah. The most important thing that we need to really understand is actually this is a very young person, maybe 20 years of age. Timothy is probably that age, that old when Paul picked him up. But he was a seasoned young person. He was filled with grace. He knew the scriptures. He respected all of the be respected by all the believers. nalla. Praise God. Always remember something. Mothers should teach their children principles of scripture. Can I hear an amen from mothers? You have a tremendous responsibility. 
you should teach your children principles from the scripture vadanathinte tattvangale ningade kunnungade agathu kodukkuvan devam ningale oru valiya uttaravathu elpikkunnundu praise god hallelujah amen see the wise women and wise men in the bible they listen to the word of god and they obey the word of god vadanam kelkkeyum anusarikkam cheynavaraanu buddhiyullavaru amen bible talks about wise man built his house upon a and jesus speaks about who is the wise man one who hears my word puts him into practice it's a big responsibility hallelujah now the practical side we need to think about mothers have discussions with your daughters and your sons നിങ്ങളുടെ മക്കളുമായിട്ട് ആൺമക്കളുമായിട്ടും പെൺമക്കളുമായിട്ടും നിങ്ങൾക്ക് യു ഷുഡ് സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ടോക്കിംഗ് ടു ദം ടോക്ക് ടു മൺ ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് തിങ്സ് സൺ വൈ ഈസ് ദറ്റ് വി ഡോൺ ചീറ്റ് ഓൺ എക്സാംസ് എന്തുകൊണ്ടാണ് നമ്മൾ പരീക്ഷയെ കളിപ്പിക്കാത്തത് ലോഡ് വേസ് യു കൻ ചീറ്റ് സ്പെഷ്യലി ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് ദിസ് ടൈം വെൻ യു ഡിൻ ഹാവ് ടു ഗോ ടു സ്കൂൾ എവറിങ് വാസ് ഓൺലൈൻ did you cheat any of you i'm not asking you to raise your hands but honestly ee pravasham veetil nan online laanlo padichondirunna parikshagal okka online la irunnu did any of you cheat the books were open they can't see it did you cheat you then some were some innocent kids here they didn't cheat but i know the silence speaks volumes this is where your christianity is being tested oh pastor i love to settle for a c that's okay c is good sounds good but don't cheat have discussions about it why we don't cheat oh ellaru oka cheyna pinne avanu cheyna na kolappam I tell you something you compromise on that one he will compromise on something else tell him son no give him give him why 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 we don't do it have discussions about it that's tell him why we don't play with drugs or alcohol why it is dangerous have discussions about it why we dress modestly have discussion what's wrong with it mama i paid for it i like it mama were no don't wear that skirt why why can't i wear it have discussion ora parayidu ora adichinte pall irukum that's not where you talk don't be a dentist at that time that's not where you talk have discussions with them tell them why it is inappropriate ask question to your young children ask question to young daughters mola do you want an older man in the church look at you oh forget about church i'll go outside wearing this no a child of god what you are outside and you should be able to wear inside the church also okay listen because you could be outside tempting young men causing them to sin God will hold you responsible. So don't get the impression young people don't get the impression young daughters don't get the impression that as long as I'm not doing it in the church I'm okay outside I can do anything no you cannot do anything you want. If you are a Christian have discussions. Hallelujah. Bible says train up a child the way he should grow. he will not depart from it when he is old prime aile endiyathilla have discussions enter into relation they come with all kinds of things why can't i marry him he is gorgeous okay that's good but why can't she why can't i marry him he is better than some of our church young people that could be true also but that does not give you the permission to marry an unbeliever 
there are unbelievers in the church also don't marry them don't give your daughters to unbelievers in the church See, just because somebody says, oh, he goes to church, he is there, you know, he is a music director, who he sings, he sings, he plays it. Don't go with any of those things. Ask 10 people, is he a child of God? Make sure that is, once that is settled, then it's okay. Very important. Have discussions. Oh. But it's you, this. There's another person, uh, this is Moses' mother. You see in Exodus chapter 2. She, her name is Jochebed. Jochebed. She's a daughter of Levi and a mother of Aaron, Miriam, and Moses. Three children. Jochebed. All right. I want you to also remember the historical setting in which this is taking place. What's happening to all the children? Children are being tossed into the river Nile. Pharaoh is very angry with this, this group of people. And male children should not live. Told everybody, male children should be killed. Soldiers were given authority to kill them. But it is during that time Moses is actually born. So... The mother, Jochebed, she decided to defy the orders of Pharaoh and she decided to keep the baby. I don't care what the law says. I'm going to raise this child. She was a risk taker. Thank God for risk taking mothers. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that she kept him for three months. Why? You don't know in Exodus 22, Exodus 2, verse 2. She saw that he was smitten with the Lord. She saw that he was smitten with the Lord. She saw that he was She saw that he was special baby. Malayalam says, What do you say? Avan, Saunari Ullavan. If Saunari is not the same, I'm just saying that she's, oh, this, this, he's so handsome. I'm going to keep this. Is that what it, she saw something special in him. That's the word that is you. She saw something special. I'm asking mothers, look at your child and see something special. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you something special about their life and their calling. Lord, show me what is special about my child. The mother detects that. The very beginning itself. So she keeps him. She came to a point where she can't keep him in the house any longer. And we, 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 we read about she making the basket. Insulating it. And then dropping it among the reeds. In the Nile River. And Pharaoh's daughter comes there. They come across this basket. This child. And then she picks him up. She wants to raise this little one. Look beautiful. You know, I want this child. And then Miriam comes and, oh, you, you want somebody to take care? Someone to feed this and take care? Oh, yeah, I'm looking for somebody. Then how, sh how Moses come back to his home again? This is all part of the divine orchestration. This is a God works things mysteriously. He does things so beautifully. Amen. Now she brings him home. All right. She agrees to take care of him. She had him only for a few years. I want you to remember. She only had him for a few years. Not for so many years. Until he weans off. Until he can transfer to solid food. She knows there's a very little time that I have. Praise God. Hallelujah. And she had a profound influence on Moses. You don't need your son to live with you for several decades to influence him. Even the little time that you have, you can influence your son and your daughter. 
നമുക്ക് എത്ര പതിറ്റാണ്ട് കിട്ടിയെന്നുള്ളതല്ല ഉള്ള സമയം കൊണ്ട് അവരെ ഇൻഫ്ലുവൻസ് ചെയ്യാനായിട്ട് പരിശുദ്ധാത്മാ നമ്മളോട് പറയുക ഇൻഫ്ലുവൻസ് ദം വെൻ യു ക്യാൻ ഹലലൂയ പ്രൈസ് ഗാഡ് ജസ് ഇമാജിൻ ദ ഫാദർ ഇസ് എ ഗോൺ ടു ഫോർ ഹാർഡ് ലേബർ ട്വൽവ് ഫോർട്ടീൻ അവേഴ്സ് എ ഡേ and she was teaching him raising him in the fear and the ways of the lord kartavinte valigalil avare valathukeya and she knew that she would have to send him back into the place into the palace of pharaoh somewhere between the age 5 and 7 ആറ് ഏഴ് വയസ്സാവുമ്പോൾ അഞ്ച് മുതൽ ഏഴ് വയസ്സിനുള്ളിൽ ദറ്റ് ഹി വിൽ ഹാവ് ടു ഗോ ബാക്ക് ടു ഫാറോസ് ഹൗസ് ടു ദ പാലസ് ദ മോസ്റ്റ് വിക്കറ്റ് ഇമ്മോറൽ ഹോം ഇൻ ദ വേൾഡ് ഐ എം ഗോയിൻ ടു ഹാവ് എം ഓൺലി ഫോർ ഫ്യൂ ഇയേഴ്സ് സോ എവറി മദർ ഹിയർ എവറി മദർ ഹിയർ ലിസൺ ഇഗ്നിമിറ്റഡ് this is should be the feeling that you and i should have oru divasam nammal ivane tiriche logathilekku vidande oru divasam varum and make sure that he is prepared make sure sons and daughters are prepared hallelujah that's where the investment part really comes the prayers the fasting the instructions that you give them hallelujah it paid off and you read in the book of hebrews hebrews until chapter 11 this when you read about the heroes of faith it says that faith enabled moses listen faith enabled moses to choose god's will for although he was raised as the son of pharaoh's daughter he refused to make that his identity you hear that he refused to make that his identity choosing instead to suffer mistreatment with the people of god Moses preferred faith certainty about the momentary enjoyment of sin's pleasures he found his true wealth in suffering abuse for being anointed more than in anything the world could offer him for his eyes looked with wonder not on immediate but on the ultimate faith great reward ശ്രദ്ധിച്ചോണ്ടെ നമ്മുടെ മക്കളെ നമ്മുടെ കുഞ്ഞുങ്ങളോട് നമുക്ക് പറയാനുള്ളത് മക്കളെ ഡോൺ ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് ദ ഇമ്മീഡിയറ്റ് ബട്ട് യു നീറ്റ് ടു ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് ദി ആൾട്ടിമേറ്റ് ഹാല ലൂയ മോനെ ഒരു ദിവസം ദർ ഇസ് എൻ ഇറ്റേണിറ്റി ഐ വോണ്ട് യു ടു ലുക്ക് ബിയോണ്ട് യുവർ കോളേജ് ഡേയ്സ് ഐ വോണ്ട് യു ലുക്ക് ബിയോണ്ട് യുവർ ടീനേജ് ഇയേഴ്സ് ഐ വോണ്ട് യു ലുക്ക് ബിയോണ്ട് ലുക്ക് ലുക്ക് ടു ദി ആൾട്ടിമേറ്റ് നോട്ട് ദി ഇമ്മീഡിയറ്റ് ദാറ്റ്സ് വേർ ഐ വോണ്ട് ടു സീ യു ദാറ്റ്സ് വേർ യു നീഡ് ടു കം സി ദിസ് ഇസ് വാട്ട് ദി ഇൻസ്ട്രക്ഷൻ ought to be did i fail did you fail we all we all have failed in some level but that's where we need to continue to but i tell you something the in things that you have invested will never be wasted it'll come back one day it'll rise up one day hallelujah amen bible also speaks about mary the mother of jesus these are all people who gave instruction there's so many things she speaks about mary okay she definitely is one of the most blessed person who ever lived on this earth the joy and the blessing of bringing jesus into this world yeshuvane logathile konduruvan bhagyam labichavala hallelujah and you see when elizabeth her relative sees her she speaks out you know with a loud voice and said blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb streegalil nee anugrahikkapettaval ninde garbha balavum anugrahikkapettathu bible says but mary remained humble that's some great quality we see in her you know in 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 um same chapter you would see uh in verse 46 for this and apol maria varayunnund ende ullam kartavine mahime padutunu ende aathma ende rakshidavaya devathil yes my spirit rejoiced in god my savior she is also recognizing that i need salvation 
I need salvation. I need a savior. Any kind of change, I have to do. See how humble she is. You never see anywhere. You don't know, read anywhere in the New Testament where Mary is just bragging. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm God's mother. I'm Jesus's mother. No, she is a humble woman. Always felt the need for salvation. She was among the hundred and twenty, waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. She felt, I need the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. She kept all these things in her heart. Deliver in him. Yes. Look at it after the birth of Jesus. See, Joseph and Mary had to nurture their infant son. Not only really taking care of the infant son. They also need to protect him from King Herod who is so angry. Because the Magi came and told Herod that a king is born. Every day. So that he is so upset. He wants to kill every child. Every male child under two years of age. So they need to protect him. It's another responsibility. So you see the new parents takes the son. They flee to Egypt. And a lot of people believe it is Alexandria they went in Egypt. Mr. Emilinna poinikim Mr. Emilinna varuthunu vilikkunu okka nammal vaaikkunnundu. So Jesus's early years he spent in Egypt. And when they heard that Herod has passed away, he died, they come back to Nazareth. So look look at the challenges they are taking. you would see mary and joseph doing all that they were supposed to do they took him to the temple on the eighth day to be circumcised and he also need to be redeemed every male child need to be redeemed first born need to be redeemed they did that you see him at the temple because they bring him to the temple for the festival of passover that's where they they lose him when they come back what is happening he was sitting with the scholars having discussion now the question that i wanted to ask everyone see in luke chapter 2 verse 40 we read the child grew and became strong in spirit filled with wisdom and the grace of god was upon him paidal valannu gnanam niranju atma vil belapettu povunu deiva krubayum avante mel well the child grew more powerful in grace for he was being filled with wisdom and the favor of god was upon him amen deivathinte prasada onnu ven undayirunnu of course you say he is a son of god so the favor of god upon but i tell you something his mother had played a very important role in making him a wise young person she spent time teaching him scriptures she helped him memorize scriptures there's no wonder at the age of 12 he can sit with the scholars in the temple argue with the elders have discussions with them hallelujah parents this is an awesome responsibility make sure that you invest into their hearts i know we are willing to take them to soccer games we are willing to travel 25 miles across to do whatever they wanted to do i'm not against any of those you do it but a question that i want to ask you do you invest time in putting principles of god's word into their hearts we do five different things except the main one what if man gains the whole world loses his soul when the atma ve etto velathu when yanum favor undaganum praise god hallelujah see listen we need to honor our mothers for the instructions all of you sit here you look at your godly mothers especially if you are come from a christian home you can always look back and see your mothers have played a very important role in your upbringing this mothers day 
all of you sitting here thank the lord for the instructions came to you through your mother or kai stotram cheyu hallelujah amen they ask you a lot of questions did you read your bible today there she goes again did you pray sometimes you lie yeah i prayed or she say i'll pray thank god for those questions see they deserves to be honored for their sacrifices it's a good thing to remember that namade ammamaru appanmaru okka namakku vendi cheyda thyagam okay avare thyagapurnamaya avare jeevitham avare bahumanya yogiraakunu think about that honoring them you know second kings chapter 4 speaks about a shunamite a shunamite woman you know she had a son how the lord used the prophet uh, through the prayers and he, she was able to conceive and have a child and the child dies the son dies in her lap very sad that is and she goes in search of a man of god avade valare interesting aitu oru there's a there's a particular verse that's very interesting so chapter 4 verse 24 then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant ride fast do not slacken your pace for me unless i tell you angane avul kaluppurthu koppittu kayeri baadhyakarnodu nalla vannam telichu viduga ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞിട്ടല്ലാതെ വഴിയിൽ എവിടെയും നിർത്തരുത് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു ഹറി ഐ നീ ടു ഗെറ്റ് ദിസ് ഇസ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് മൈ ലൈഫ് ഓഫ് മൈ ചൈൽഡ് ഈസ് ഇൻ ഡേഞ്ചർ ഈസ് യു നോ ഐ ഐ നീഡ് സം ഐ നീഡ് എ റിസറക്ഷൻ ഫോർ മൈ ചൈൽഡ് ഷി വാസ് വില്ലിങ് ടു ഗോ ടു എനി ലെങ് സി ഹെ സൺ അലൈ ഹറി don't slow down for my comfort did you hear that's a word that is used there don't slow down for my theeru nalikkunnodu varaya allengil vandi odikkunnodu varayana gatter keriya onnum varapadanne aavashyam onnum illa kuli veenal saaram illa don't worry about my back it's important that you keep the pace speed is usually john because i need to get the my body my comfort my health is not important i'm all focused on my child that is sacrifice that is truly sacrifice you know something is a story that that came in in kerala years ago one of the districts in kerala they were honoring people who got the highest marks in high school in that particular district i think i've shared this thing with you years ago so they call all the i think 10 people who got the highest scores in that particular district so they also invited a very rich man a famous politician and he's a businessman as a chief guest so the lot of people came a lot of people in the audience so they called the person who got the 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 10th rank uh the first then let's go from back all the way so they called person who got the 10th rank in that particular district and the first rank holder will be called at the end so they called the first girl and the person leading uh us how did you get such a victory itrayum veli vijayam nenak engane karasthamaakkida ee vijayathil nee aarkaanu nanni parayunnu yochu and she said ee vijayathil nenu etthum kudal nanni parayunna ene padipicha adhyapakar so i salute my teachers who did the best work then i salute my school in and the school in it then my mother is a professor my father works in a bank all these things contributed 
And then towards the end, fast forward, the fellow who got the first rank, his name is Sham. They asked him to come forward to receive the prize. Ask him, what's the secret of your victory? What do you want to say? How were you able to get this achievement? So he got the mic in his hand. He kept silent for some time. Then he was looking everywhere in the audience, looking for us, looking for somebody. And in one of the corners, his mother was sitting there. He saw his mother. He identified her. And he saw the joy on her face, in her eyes. And he said, I have a request to you. I want to receive this from my mother. Give me an opportunity for that to the organizers. He said, and you need to understand, even the chief guest is sitting there also. And he is saying, I want to receive this from my mother. So people sitting in the stage are looking at each other. Um, and even the chief guest was wondering what's happening. Then the question is, Sham, who is your mother? Arandi Amma. And what's her name? Is she here? He said, yes, she is here. You know, papadam, you all, you like papadam, right? Yeah, and that's the only one thing you like. And she's the one who makes papadam. It's probably not a glorious job. She's here. That's my mother. And she's behind my victory. It's a prayer of my mother. It's the tears of my mother. I'm the result of my mother's hard work, selfless sacrifice. Every evening, my mother will read a chapter from Bible. Then we pray. A prayer will be drenched in the tears. Every single day, my mother will pray. Only after the prayer, I get kanyi and papadam. That's the only food I ever eat. Can you imagine? Kanyi and papadam. You don't even know what kanyi is, right? Ask your married parents, they'll tell you what kanyi is. Just, just rice with some watery rice and then a papadam. Maybe a papadam gets because she makes it. Morning and you know, lunch and also dinner, exactly the same. She's my best friend. My mother is my best friend. And the they didn't have electricity. So in the, in the kerosene lamp, my mother would, when I sit to study, my mother would sit next to me. She makes papadam. When I get really tired, sometimes my mother makes me tea. Then she comes and kiss my head with love. And the Ravilan and Schooli Poyal, Ratri Undakia Papadam, Unaki Vidigal and Kadagal and Gondua Vititana and the Amena Padavicha. When I go to school, she would dry up this Papadam she made in the night time and she goes to homes and she sells it. So she taught me. Rainy time comes, I lived in a house that was just pouring down with water. She tried so much to protect me and I want to receive it from her. So the people, the audience were very silent. Everyone was listening very carefully. People asked, they asked, what's your mother's name? She said, Ponnamma. So the person introducing asked the mother to come to the stage. Everybody was looking at her. She was wearing, she was a very lean person, a little dark, wearing an old sari, but she made sure it pressed well. This is the first time she is actually standing in front of such a big crowd in her life. They all gave a big applause as she was coming to the stage. 
She came, she embraced her son. She gave him her usual kiss on his forehead. And she said, It's a very good stage. 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 the sun said itrayam veli oru sadasil vedil vache ende amme enikena ee choodu chumbanam thanneyanu enikku kittavunna il etto veliya sammanam ende ore parajayathil ninnum enne ezhunelpichadum enikkennum oorjam pagarnadum ende ammayude chumbanangala elam class vare padanathil i was behind till i was 7th grade ende amme enne orikkalum kutchapaduthilla she never blame me എത്ര കുറഞ്ഞ മാർക്ക് ചുംബനങ്ങൾ മാർക്കിനും ചുംബനങ്ങൾ തന്ന് അമ്മ എന്നെ പ്രോത്സാഹിപ്പിച്ചുകൊണ്ടത് ഈവൻ ദ ലോവസ്റ്റ് മാർക്സ് ദർ ഐ ഗെറ്റ് മൈ മദർ യൂസ് ടു കിസ് മീ ഫോർ ദാറ്റ് ആ പ്രചോദനമാണ് ഇന്ന് എൻ്റെ ഉന്നത വിജയത്തിന് ഈ വേദിയിൽ എത്തിക്കാൻ അമ്മ കഴിഞ്ഞത് ദീസ് ദാറ്റ് കിസ് എൻ്റെ അമ്മയുടെ ആ കഷ്ടപ്പാടിനു വേണ്ടി എനിക്ക് തരുന്ന ഈ വിലമതിക്കാത്ത ഉപഹാരം ബഹുമാനപ്പെട്ട ചീഫ് ഗസ്റ്റ് എൻ്റെ അമ്മയ്ക്ക് നൽകണമെന്ന് ഞാൻ അപേക്ഷിക്കുന്നു ശാമിൻ്റെ വാക്കുകൾ നീണ്ട കരഘോഷത്തിലാണ് വേദിയിലുള്ളവരെല്ലാം സ്വീകരിച്ചത് ആൻഡ് ഹീ ലുക്ക് ദ ചീഫ് കെസ് ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് ഹെർ ആൻഡ് സെറ്റ് ഐ റിമെമ്പർ യു ഇസ് ദർ ഐ ഹാവ് എ സ്കൂൾ ഇൻ ദ പ്ലേസ് വെർ യു ഗൈസ് ലിവ് ഐ റിമെമ്പർ യു കമ്മിങ് വിത്ത് ഹിം ആസ്കിങ് ഫോർ എൻ അഡ്മിഷൻ ആൻഡ് ഫോർ എ റിഡക്ഷൻ ഇൻ ഫീസ് ബട്ട് ഐ റെഫ്യൂസ് ഇറ്റ് അന്ന് ഞാൻ അത് തള്ളിക്കളഞ്ഞു ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു പട്ടടം ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്നവർക്ക് പഠിക്കാൻ ഗവൺമെൻറ് സ്കൂളുണ്ട് those who are making papadams you have government school you can send your child to don't send them here he felt so sad the story actually ends i don't want to read the whole thing here and saying basically he sees this man is telling i make sure that i provide for all his further education i will also build a house for you the key thing is actually it's a sacrifice of a mother was behind his success this mother's day children i want you to remember the sacrifices your mothers have made i always say about the women who works here 14 15 hours they work in hospitals come back early morning when your dad is about to go to work they come heavy eyes are heavy they have not slept for a moment the whole night and you are the six month old crawling all over the place you're not old enough even to watch tv at least you can put it on tv when you watch for some time she can take a cat nap at that time but she could not take one minute sleep only when you sleep they probably get half an hour sleep never forget the sacrifices they made thank god for them when you get old don't push them away from your life they want to sit with you in a church and worship sit with them and worship they want to sit with their sons and daughters and grandchildren and worship why do you push them away don't be selfish they made sacrifice can you not make one little sacrifice or kochcha sacrifice nee thayar le hallelujah and you now you are old you have money but your mother never went to a restaurant never went to a restaurant she never bought a hamburger she could but she she did not she saved it all to spend your college everything she saved was spent for your college and they took loan against their home to do your wedding now that you are old and you and your wife go to the nearby restaurant to eat take that old woman with you once in a while the amma come with me to this restaurant you deserve it amma you deserve it don't simply say amma like oli kanni she likes other things too she likes burgers she likes sandwiches she likes other things but you just assume it's not assumption it's just your lie 
Don't take them to the restaurant and say to your brother, you pay for mom, I pay for dad. Don't do that. Honor your parents. Remember now you're a professional. But remember that those they, 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 they travel from here all the way to Tampa, all the way to, for, to UF, traveling, making all the cook, cooking everything for you on, sound, on, on, on other days and, and carrying all the way because you couldn't come because you have an exam. Don't forget that when you're old. Don't push them aside. Honor your parents. You should honor your parents. A lot of people think it's you and your kids. A lot of parents listen very carefully here to all my parents here. Now we live in nuclear, we believe in nuclear family. It's just me, my wife, and my kid. That's our world. But you have, if you have neglected your father and mother, because you're paying all the attention to your wife and your kids, this is four, this three or four or five, this is our world. But you have abandoned your, your old mother and old father. I tell you something, what goes around, comes around. One day they will also, you thought you spend everything on them, but they also make sure that you sit like that. Don't forget, what you sow, you reap. Honor them when you can. To the mothers also, I want to tell you here. Don't put your head into everything they do. Especially as they grow older, they get married. Give them the freedom. Give that, you know, just make sure you keep boundaries. Don't get involved in too much in their life. You give them the freedom, then they'll respect you. Respect them, then they respect you too. But honoring father and mother goes a very long way. I think our time is really up. And I just stop right there. That's all I wanted. There's still three or four more things that I want to share. But I just wanted to close right there because our time is really up. Always remember the prayers of your mother. And the Amir Prathana would kill him. The Maranabhogar. Hallelujah. Praise God. Honor them for their prayers. Look at Hannah prayed. Just want to say a couple of things here. Just about the prayer. She was boldly asking God for a son because she wanted God to have a man in the house of God. So I can be comforted. No, she said, we need a man in the house of God. We have Eli whose eyes are blinded and the, the house of God is in disarray. I need somebody here who hears from God. Mothers pray for things like that. Pray for a Samuel like that. Hallelujah. Somebody who will stand for God. Somebody who hears from God. A prophet of God. From Dan to Bathsheba. Let that be your desire. Let that be your desire. Well, he can be a president of the United States, a different thing. But somebody who stands for God. God's honor was her first concern. You read in 1 Samuel, 7, 1 Samuel chapter 1, you read all those things. And finally you see him, see her giving him back to God. Giving him back to God. How old he was? Maybe three or four years of age. Just imagine your four-year-old, you're taking back to the tabernacle with a bull, three-year-old bull, and taking everything to the temple and say, I'm going to leave him here. And as you turn back, you say, Mone, bye. I, I sometimes sit and imagine Hannah, she was walking away from the temple in Shiloh. And the beetle. For me, the most important thing is, is not to have a child in my home and enjoying the presence and the play of a child. I want to see a man in the house of God. And I want to see him serving God. 
Let God be your number one desire. Mothers deserve to be honored for being there for you. They were there to pick you up when you fell down and hurt your knee. Thank God for mom who picked you up. They picked you up when you were devastated from a failure. They thought of Paul. They walked and said, it's okay. It's okay. We love you. They picked you up. You should thank them for the tears they shed for you. The tears they were shedding in the presence of God for you. Honor them. For the tears. For the meals. They have cooked for you. Have you ever said, breakfast ready, you come and eat. Have you ever said, thank you, Amma, for the breakfast. Thank you for the lunch that you made. Thank you for washing all the dishes, my clothes. We don't. We have entitlement. We think we deserve it. Thank them for the sacrifices they have made to raise you and your siblings. They drove hundreds of miles to pick you and drop you to your school. Stood in line for you hours to pick you every single day. Never forget them. Hallelujah. But on the other side, we all need to understand. These are all earthly parents. God asked them, us to honor them. The kondangi poilum. Namalari gari orkulam. Namalari appani amme yake nirupa namalari marakkandiru dosa ondu. Shamalari marakkathiru kartha ondu. Amme ya poilum ninda thadhan ninda maro danakim. Arilam ninda maranad bhuva forgets you. But he will embrace you. The Lord will embrace you. Like a mother cares for his child. The Lord cares for us. He is an awesome God. He's the only one who said, I'll be with you till the very end. Your mother is good. My mother is gone in 2010. Mother, my mother is the first one who came to faith. We have some of our brothers who, sisters who lost their mothers this year. But they all can come only till the grave. But Jesus said, I'll be with you till the very end. That's our biggest mom, our dad, is our Lord. Hallelujah. While we celebrate that Lord, we also honor the earthly parents God has given us. Will you close your eyes for a moment of prayer? Father, we thank you for this beautiful Sunday. As the world celebrates the mothers. Maybe for them it has to do with merchandise, commerce. But Lord, today as a church, Lord, we remember as spiritual children, we remember our mothers, Lord. Mothers who invested in us. We thank God for the grandmothers who prayed, who stood in the gap for us, Lord. We remember dads and mothers, Lord. And special focus today is on our mothers, Lord. We thank you for their godliness, their sacrifice, their love, their instructions, their care for us, O oh God. Their selfless life, Lord. Help us, Lord, to honor them all the days of our lives. Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you have given us, the material blessings. Now we offer our tithes and offerings to you, Lord. Let it be a fragrant offering before you, Lord. I'm praying for everyone who is struggling with uh, immigration, a job, finding a job, maybe looking forward to have a promotion. Lord, bless them, Lord Jesus. Meet them at the point of their needs, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.